A reading from the book of the prophet Hosea. Thus says the Lord, Return, O Israel, to the Lord your God. You have collapsed through your guilt. Take with your words and return to the Lord. Say to him, Forgive all iniquity and receive what is good, that we may render as offerings the bullocks from our stalls. Assyria will not save us, nor shall we have horses to mount. We shall say no more, our God, to the work of our hands, for in you the orphans find compassion. I will heal their defections, says the Lord. I will love them freely, for my wrath is turned away from them. I will be like the dew of Israel. He shall blossom like the lily. He shall strike root like the Lebanon cedar and put forth his shoots. His splendor shall be like the olive tree and his fragrance like the Lebanon cedar. Again they shall dwell in his shade and raise grain. They shall blossom like the vine and his fame shall be like the vine of Lebanon. Ephraim, what more has he to do with idols? I have humbled him but I will prosper him. I am like a verdant cypress tree, because of me you bear fruit. Let him who is wise understand these things. Let him who is prudent know them. Straight are the paths of the Lord, in them the just walk, but sinners stumble in them. Verbum Domini I am the Lord your God, hear my voice. I am the Lord your God, hear my voice. An unfamiliar speech I hear. I relieve his shoulder of the burden. His hands were free from the basket. In distress you call, and I rescue you. I am the Lord your God, hear my voice. Unseen I answer you in thunder. I attest to you at the waters of Meribah. Hear my people, and I will admonish you. O Israel, you will not hear me. There shall not be a strange God among you, nor you shall worship any alien God. I, the Lord, am your God, who led you forth from the land of Egypt. If only my people will heed, my, will heed me, and Israel walk in my ways, I will free them with their best of wheat, and with honey from the rock I will fill them. Lexio Sancti Evangelii Secundum Marcum. One of the scribes came to Jesus and asked him, Which is the first of all the commandments? Jesus replied, The first is this. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is Lord alone. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. 
The second is this, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. The scribe said to him, well said, teacher, you are right in saying he is one and there is no other than he. And to love him with all your heart, with all your understanding, with all your strength, and to love your neighbor as yourself is worth more than all burnt offerings and sacrifices. And when Jesus saw that he answered with understanding, he said to him, you are not far from the kingdom of God. And no one dared to ask him any more questions. Verbum Domini. As we seek to live more faithfully these commands we hear in the gospel today, each of us as a believer desires ultimately to have this love of God with all of our heart, all of our soul, all of our mind, and all of our strength. And yet we get frustrated with how weak we are, or how distracted we get, or that question, why can't I, or why, are I, why am I not living uh, this out in my life? Why is it so difficult? Uh, or even that exercise of love of our neighbor. It sounds so beautiful from the words from the mouth of Jesus. And yet, in the practical daily living, it's quite the challenge. And the church gives to us these means during the Lenten season of prayer, fasting, and almsgiving, or some would say prayer, fasting, and mercy, uh, to bring those to the forefront, and they ultimately aid us or assist us in growing in our ability to live this, this command of our Redeemer. Um, I know we hear that word fasting, I'm going to give you a quote today, very simply, from St. Peter Chrysologus, and he says that you cannot separate these three things, prayer, fasting, and mercy, that they have to be done together as a uh, complementary aspects of our, our Lenten practice. Um, otherwise, they, it falls apart. But we hear this word fasting, and if you think about it, many people say, oh, the church is commanding fasting. Uh, every Friday during Lent. What the church asks of us every Friday during Lent is abstinence, that we not eat meat. But there are really only a few days that the church really gives us that command uh, or has that expectation that we actually fast, and that's on Ash Wednesday and Good Friday. Remember, as a, a brand new priest, it hit Ash Wednesday and I was up here articulating, our, our marketing representatives were in town, and uh, Art Peretti, who's up in the Northwest, is kind of has a funny sense of humor. So he was listening to me as a brand new priest saying, now, what we, the church means by fasting is that you have one meal that, or two smaller meals that cannot together exceed the size of one larger meal, and so we come out of the mass. He goes, now, Father, I, I'm not sure if I got this all straight here. He goes, now, what if I'm eating a piece of toast for breakfast and there's this, it's a larger crumb than normal that sticks in my tooth and later in mid-morning that falls, now would that be considered a small meal or, and I was like, hmm. <laughs> and then he was saying, now the two smaller meals, you know, do they, if I eat large small meals, then I can have one huge, you know, does that, how, is that how you would interpret it? And we we're having a good laugh about it. But we often can get into the technicalities, and that's what he was jabbing me about, is that we get into all the technicalities, we lose sight of what we're doing um, and what the purpose of all of this is about. And so I simply, again, want to share with you these words of St. Peter Chrysologus about prayer, fasting, and mercy. 
He says that prayer, fasting, and mercy, these three are a unit. They give life to one another. For fasting is the soul of prayer, and mercy is the life of fasting. Let no one cut these three apart. They are inseparable. If a man has only one of them, or if he does not have them all simultaneously, he has nothing. Therefore, he who prays should also fast, and he who fasts should also be merciful. He who wants to be heard when he petitions should hear another who petitions him. He who does not close his ear to a suppliant opens God's ear to himself. If anyone wants God to perceive that he is hungry, he should himself take notice of the hungry. If he hopes for mercy, he should show mercy himself. If he desires fatherly kindness, he should display it first. He who wishes someone to make an offering to him should make an offering himself. And he simply says this, and this is what I would close with this morning, offer your soul to God. Offer the oblation of fasting. Do this to make your soul, he's making our soul, comparing it to Christ and his sacrifice. Do this to make your soul a pure victim, a holy sacrifice, a living victim, which remains yours while it is given to God.